When applying for a home loan, there were several traditional qualifications for getting a mortgage. A person had to have a good credit score above 680, the borrower had to be able to document his income to assets, his debt to income ratio had to be less than 35%, he had to have two months of payments in liquid reserves, and he had to have a 20% down payment or be able to pay 25% of the home's value up front. If he had all of these requirements, he would satisfy what was called an A paper mortgages. These were the cream of the crop mortgages that were considered very safe investments. Below A paper mortgages were, was a category called Alt A, and these were types of mortgages between A paper and subprime, and they were given to people who typically did not satisfy all the requirements for qualifying for an A paper mortgage. As a result, they were perceived to be riskier and therefore would charge a higher interest rate by banks. Below Alt A was a category called subprime mortgages, which was the lowest quality of mortgages. In extreme cases, mortgage borrowers did not have the income or assets to buy a house, and until recently, subprime borrowers did not have the opportunity to buy a house at all. If they did qualify for a mortgage, they were considered an extreme risk. So let's say a family wants to buy a house. They could go straight to a commercial bank or they could go to a mortgage broker. Now a mortgage broker is in charge of creating a relationship between a borrower and a lender. A mortgage broker isn't actually in charge of lending money or originating the mortgage. In other words, a mortgage broker would not use her own money to finance a mortgage. That comes from a bank. The important thing to note is that the mortgage broker receives a fee for her actions in facilitating the sale. So what happens next is what I've discussed in my previous podcast. The bank fronts the money for the house and gives the family a mortgage and in return receives monthly payments. Now you'll remember from the recap how commercial banks took the monthly payments that they received from families packaged them together, sold these payments off to investment banks, and then those investment banks sold them off to investors. Now here is the issue. Investors saw that these mortgages, at least the initial ones that they bought, as such stable investments with good return that they concluded, hey, this is a good market to get into. The result was that more and more investors wanted in on this pie. The problem was that these once safe and secure mortgages were beginning to turn into a risky investment. How did this all happen? Well, there were a variety of factors. One, there was the changing responsibility of mortgages. When a family was applying for a home loan, they would go directly to their commercial bank and the bank would front the money for the house. But beforehand, the family would go through a rigorous process to make sure they were qualified and in a good financial position to make these monthly payments. Now here is where the circumstances got a little more difficult. The reason why was because commercial banks were assuming a family's debt, and if for any reason a family wouldn't be able to make those monthly payments, the bank would assume a loss. Yes, they would technically get the family's house, and they would try and resell this on the market, but this was not an ideal situation. Secondly, we saw banks transforming from institutions that underwrote and monitored financial risk to mortgage brokers with far less concern about the financial stability of products they underwrote. In fact, the past couple decades saw the emergence of banks called mortgage banks. You've probably heard of some famous ones already. Does the name Countrywide ring a bell? Now, mortgage banks are different from regular commercial banks in that they don't take customer deposits or savings accounts. Recall from my podcast on how mortgages worked that I was talking about how back in the day, commercial banks would pull together money from savings accounts and put them together as a loan for a house. Well, mortgage banks were different. What they did was they sold mortgages to families, and then they would sell the rights to these mortgages immediately on this market called the secondary mortgage market. The secondary mortgage market is an amazing place for banks because it offers them immediate money. Instead of having to wait years for a full mortgage to be repaid and collect small streams of money every month, what banks could do is that they could sell those mortgages to corporations such as investment banks or government service entities such as Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae. Then they would use the money from Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae to sell more mortgages and this process would continue. As mortgage banks started making more and more money, commercial banks started following through 
and selling their mortgages on the secondary mortgage market. The result was that because mortgages were sold for a fee, banks were far less concerned about the quality of the mortgages they underwrote. Then suddenly with the emergence of the mortgage market, this debt was being passed on and on from family to bank to bank and finally to the pool of investors. This created this situation where banks would not suffer losses for the mortgages they underwrote even if they failed. And if there were losses, the banks that issued them in the first place were distant because they had passed that debt on to someone else. In addition, mortgages were generally wrapped together and sold off to investors. In doing this, they were taking direct pressure off of banks to depend on each mortgage individually. Instead, by wrapping mortgages together as this one product, they transformed them into what were called mortgage-backed securities. The idea was that if the Johnson family in Connecticut had to default on their mortgage payments, their loss would be absorbed by all other mortgages in the pool that were doing okay. Finally, there was pressure from investors for more and more mortgages, but there was a limit on the number of A paper or prime mortgages that were opening up. As bankers saw this pressure, they knew they had to do something. So what you had was this situation where mortgage brokers and mortgage banks started looking into offering mortgages to lower quality borrowers such as Alte and even subprime. But little did they know that this switch was going to have disastrous effects on the economy. To review, since banks were passing on mortgages to other banks for a fee, they were willing to relax their once strict underwriting standards. This allowed the mortgage pool to open up to riskier mortgages. Coming up, the mechanics of why things did not work out. Thanks for watching. To learn more or watch more podcasts, visit www.subprimethemusical.wordpress.com